My name is Devin Watkins, and I will be, uh, it's my joy to provide the English language commentary and translations for today's liturgy. And we hear the music playing, the, the hymn, opening hymn, and the procession leading into St. Peter's Basilica. Session makes its way to the sanctuary, we hear the words of Psalm 131, which is beautifully chanted by the choir as it accompanies this solemn procession, filling the basilica with reverence and devotion. The words of the psalm are, Your priests shall be clothed with holiness, your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed. The Lord swore an oath to David, he will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. As we hear these words, we are indeed reminded of the sacred duty entrusted to the clergy to shepherd and serve God's people with love and humility. As the celebrant incenses the altar and the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary and child Jesus, we recall that the Chrism Mass is a liturgy which the bishop of the local diocese concelebrates with all the priests of his diocese, the presbyterate. This liturgy aims to manifest the communion that exists between the priests and their bishop. Therefore, it is usually preferable that all of the priests of the diocese take part in this liturgy. Some dioceses celebrate the Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday morning, however, another day close to Easter before the Triduum can be chosen. It is during this liturgy that the oils used in the celebration of the sacraments throughout the diocese are blessed. The oil of the sick, the oil of catechumens, and the Chrism oil, which is consecrated. We prepare to begin this Mass with the Holy Father. La pace sia con voi. Fratelli e sorelle, per celebrare degnamente i santi misteri, riconosciamo i nostri peccati. And we pause to recall our sins as we begin this liturgy. Pietà di noi, Signore. Quando di te abbiamo peccato, mostraci, Signore, la tua misericordia. E donaci la tua salvezza. Dio onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi. 
perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna. Let us pray. 
O Padre, o Father, who consecrated your only Son with the un unction in the Holy Spirit to make him Messiah and Lord, grant that we may be made worthy to become your witnesses in the, our world and your work of salvation. Through, your Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Uh, a reading from the letter the prophet Isaiah the Lord a promulgare l'anno di grazia del Signore, il giorno di vendetta del nostro Dio, per consolare tutti gli afflitti, per dare agli afflitti di Sion una corona invece della cenere, olio di letizia invece dell'abito da lutto, veste di lode invece di uno spirito mesto. Voi sarete chiamati sacerdoti del Signore, ministri del nostro Dio sarete detti. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn, and to give them their, for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, the oil for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are erased whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. My truth and my love shall be with him. My name, his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. Dal libro dell'Apocalisse di San Giovanni Apostolo. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, 
the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Parola di Dio Rendiamo grazie a Dio Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor. of you following on various partner radio stations. Pope Francis blesses the deacon as he makes his way to the ambo. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Dal Vangelo secondo Luca. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And the deacon takes the censer to incense. 
the book of the Gospels. In quel tempo Gesù venne a Nazare dove era cresciuto e secondo il suo solito di sabato Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of fa favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. Allora cominciò a dire loro, oggi si è compiuta questa scrittura che voi avete ascoltato. Parola del Signore. The deacon processes with the book of the Gospels back to where Pope Francis is seated and we prepare to listen to our Holy Father's homily for this Chrism Mass. Nella sinagoga gli occhi di tutti erano fissi su di lui. Colpisce sempre questo passaggio del Vangelo che porta a visualizzare la scena, a immaginare quel momento di silenzio in cui tutti gli sguardi erano concentrati. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. This passage of the Gospel is striking. It always makes us imagine that moment of silence when every eye was on Jesus, in a mixture of wonder and hesitance. We know, however, what happened next. After Jesus had unmasked the false expectations of his town people, they were filled with rage. They got up and drove him out of town. They had indeed looked upon Jesus, but their hearts were not prepared to change at his word. They lost the occasion of a lifetime. Nella sera di oggi, giovedì santo, avviene un incrocio di sguardi alternativo. Tonight, on Holy Thursday, we will offer a very different exchange of looks. It involves Peter, the first pastor of our church. Peter, too, initially refused to accept the unmasking words that the Lord had spoken to him. You will deny me three times. As a result, he lost sight of Jesus and denied him at the cock's crow. Then, however, the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord and went out and wept bitterly. His eyes were flooded with tears that, rising up from a wounded heart, liberated him from his false notions and his self-assurance. Those bitter tears changed his life. Le parole e i gesti di Gesù per anni non avevano smosso Pietro dalle sue attese simili a quelle della gente di Nazareth. Anche lui Jesus' words and actions in the course of those years 
had not altered Peter's expectations, so similar to those of the people of Nazareth. He too was expecting a political messiah, powerful, forceful, and decisive. Scandalized at the sight of Jesus, powerless and submitting passively to his arrest, he said, I do not know him. How true that was. Peter did not know Jesus. He would only begin to know him when at the moment of his denial, he yielded to tears of shame and repentance. And he would know Jesus in truth when hurt because Jesus said to him a third time, do you love me? He would let the Lord's gaze penetrate his entire being. Then from saying, I do not know him, he was able to say, Lord, you know everything. Dear brother priests, the healing of the heart of Peter, the healing of the apostle, the healing of the pastor came about when, grief-stricken and repentant, he allowed himself to be forgiven by Jesus. That healing took place amid tears, bitter weeping, and the sorrow that leads to renewed love. For some time now, I have felt the need to share with you on this Holy Thursday of the Year of Prayer a few thoughts on an aspect of the spiritual life that has been somewhat neglected, yet remains essential. Even the word I'm going to use is somewhat old-fashioned, yet worthy of reflecting on. That word is compunction. What is compunction? The origin of the term has to do with piercing. Compunction is a piercing of the heart that is painful and evokes tears of repentance. Here, another episode from the life of Saint, the life of Saint Peter can help us. His heart having been pierced by Jesus' gaze and his words, Peter, now purified and set afire by the Holy Spirit, proclaimed on the day of Pentecost to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. His hearers, recognizing both the evil that they had done and the salvation that the Lord was offering them, were themselves cut to the heart. That is what compunction is. Not a sense of guilt that makes us discouraged or obsessed with our unworthiness, but a beneficial piercing that purifies and heals the heart. Once we recognize our sin, our hearts can be open to the working of the Holy Spirit, the source of living water that wells up within us and brings tears to our eyes. Those who are willing to be unmasked and let the God's gaze pierce their hearts will receive the gift of those tears, the holiest waters after those of baptism. Dear brothers, dear brother priests, I pray for this for you. Yet we need to understand clearly what it means to weep for ourselves. It does not mean weeping in self-pity, as we are so often tempted to do, as for example when we are disappointed and upset that our hopes and frust are frustrated when we feel misunderstood, perhaps even by our fellow priests and our superiors, or when we take an odd or an morbid pleasure in brooding over wrongs received, feeling sorry for ourselves, convinced that we were not treated as we deserved, or fearing that the future would hold further unpleasant surprises. These are examples of what St. Paul calls worldly grief as opposed to godly grief, Weeping for ourselves, on the other hand, means seriously repenting from saddening God by our sins 
recognizing that we always remain in God's debt, admitting that we have strayed from the path of holiness and fidelity to the love of the one who gave his life for us. It means looking within and repenting of our ingratitude and inconstancy and acknowledging our duplicity, dishonesty and hip hypocrisy clerical hypocrisy, dear brothers, that hypocrisy in which we often fall. Please be aware of clerical hypocrisy. And turning our gaze once more to the crucified Lord and letting ourselves be touched by his love, which always forgives and raises up, never disappointing the trust of those who hope in him. Tears thus well up, and in flowing down our cheeks, descend to purify our heart. Compunction demands effort, but it bestows peace. It is not a source of anxiety, but of healing for the soul, since it acts as a balm upon the, wor the wounds of sin preparing us to receive the caress of the heavenly physician who transforms the broken contrite heart once it has been softened by tears. Compunction is thus the antidote to sclerocardia, that hardness of heart so often condemned by Jesus. So, for without repentance and sorrow, the heart hardens. First it becomes stiff, impatient with problems and indifferent to persons, and then cold, impassive, and impenetrable. Then finally turns to stone. Yet, just as the drops of water can wear down a stone, so tears can slowly soften stony hearts. Sorrow can miraculously lead to sweetness. Here we can begin to see why the masters of the spiritual life insist on the importance of compunction. St. Benedict says that in tears and groaning daily we should confess in prayer to God the sins of our past and observes in a prayer, it is not by many words that we are graciously heard, but by our purity of heart and tears of compunction. St. John Chrysostom notes that a single tear can extinguish a blaze of sins while the imitation of Christ tells us, give yourself to compunction of heart, since through levity of heart and neglect of our shortcomings, we do not feel the sorrows of our soul. Compunction is the remedy for this, since it brings us back to the truth about ourselves so that the depths of our being sinners can reveal the infinitely greater reality of our being pardoned by grace. It is not surprising then that Isaac of Nineveh could say, the one who forgets the greatness of his sins forgets the greatness of God's mercy in his regard. This, he forgets his God's grace. To be sure, all interior renewal is born of the encounter between our human misery and God's mercy, and it develops through poverty of spirit, which allows the Holy Spirit to enrich us. Here too we can think of the cleary the clear teaching of many spiritual masters, including, once again, Saint, we can think about Saint Isaac. Those who acknowledge their sins are greater than those who by their prayers raise the dead. Those who weep for an hour over their sins are greater than those 
who serve the whole world by contemplation. Those who are blessed with self-knowledge are greater than those blessed with the vision of angels. Fratelli, veniamo a noi, sacerdoti. Brother priests, this, look to ourselves and ask ourselves what part compunction and tears play in our examination of conscience and our prayers. Let us ask ourselves whether with the years that pass our tears increase. In nature, the older we become, the less we weep. In the life of the Spirit, however, we are asked to become like children. If we fail to weep, we regress and grow old within, whereas those whose prayers become simple, simpler and deeper, grounded in adoration and wonder in the presence of God, grow and mature. They become less attached to themselves and more attached to Christ. Made poor in spirit, they draw closer to the poor, those who are most dear to God. As St. Francis of Assisi wrote in his testament, those whom we used to keep at a distance now become our dear companions. So it is that those who feel compunction of heart increasingly feel themselves brothers and sisters to all the sinners of the world, setting aside airs of superiority and harsh judgment, and filled with a burning desire to show love and make reparation. Here we see yet another aspect of compunction, solidarity, a heart that is docile, liberated by the spirit of the Beatitudes, becomes naturally prone to practice compunction towards others. Rather than feeling anger and scandal at the failings of our brothers and sisters, it weeps for their sins. There occurs a sort of reversal where the natural tendency to be indulgent with ourselves and inflexible with others is overturned and by God's grace we become strict with ourselves and merciful towards others. The Lord seeks above all in those consecrated to him, men and women who bewail the sins of the church and the world and become intercessors on behalf of all. How many heroic witnesses in the church have shown us this way? We think of the monks of the desert in East and West, the constant intercession in groaning and tears of St. Gregory of Narek, the Franciscan offering for unrequited love, and those many priests who, like the Cure of Ars, the lived lives of penance for the salvation of others. Dear brothers, this is not poetry but priesthood. Dear brother priests, from us his shepherds, the Lord desires not harshness, harshness but love and tears for those who have strayed. If our hearts feel compunction, the difficult situations, the sufferings, and the lack of faith that we encounter daily will make us respond not with condemnation, but with perseverance and mercy. How greatly we need to be set free from harshness and recrimination, from selfishness and ambition, rigidity and frustration in order to become ourselves completely to God and to find in Him the calm that shields us from the storms raging all around us. Let us pray and intercede and shed tears for others. In this way we will allow the Lord to work His miracles. 
and let us not fear, for he will surely surprise us. Our ministry will help us in this. Today in our secular societies we run the risk of being hyperactive and at the same time feeling inadequate, with the result that we lose enthusiasm and are tempted to pull up the oars, to take refuge in complaining, and we forget that God is infinitely greater than all our problems. When that happens, we can become bitter and prickly and complaining. Be careful of complaining. Whereas we always talk poorly about others, finding opportunities to complain. However, if bitterness and compunction are directed not to the world but to our own hearts, the Lord will not fail to visit us and raise us up. That is exactly what the imitation of Christ tells us to do. Busy yourselves not with the affairs of others and do not become entangled in the business of your superiors. Keep an eye primarily on yourself and admonish yourself instead of your friends. If you do not enjoy the favor of men, do not let it sadden you. Yet consider it a serious matter if you do not conduct yourselves as well or as carefully as is becoming. Lastly, let me emphasize another essential point. Compunction is not so much work of our work, but a grace. And as such, it must be sought in prayer. Repentance is, gift, is God's gift and the work of the Holy Spirit is an aid to cultivating a spirit of repentance, I would share two bits of advice. First, let us stop looking at our life and our vocation in terms of effi efficiency and immediate results and being caught up in present needs and expectations. Instead, let us view the things against the greater horizon of the past and the future. The past, by recalling God's fidelity, being mindful of his forgiveness and firmly anchored in his love. The future, by looking to the eternal goal to, goal to which we are called, the ultimate purpose of our lives. Broadening our horizons helps us to expand our hearts, to spend time with the Lord and to experience compunction. My second bit of advice follows from the first. Let us rediscover our need to cultivate prayer that is not obligatory and functional, but freely chosen, tranquil and prolonged. Let us return to adoration. How is your prayer? Have you forgotten to adore? Let us repeat and re use the prayer of the heart. Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us sense God's grandeur even as we contemplate our own sinfulness and open our hearts to the healing power of His gaze. Then we will rediscover the wisdom of Holy Mother Church in having our prayer begin with the words of the poor man who cries, God, come to my assistance. Dear brothers, allow me to conclude by returning to St. Peter in his tears. The altar we see above his tomb makes us think of all the times that we priests who daily say, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. 
We have disappointed and grieved the one who loved us so greatly, so as to make our hands the instrument of his presence. We do well then to repeat those prayers we say in silence. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we may be accepted by you, Lord. And wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Yet in every way, brothers, we are comforted by the certainty spoken of in today's liturgy. The Lord, consecrated by his anointing, came to bind up the brokenhearted. If hearts are broken, surely they can be bound up and healed by Jesus. Thank you, dear priests, for your open... Thank you. Thank you for your open and docile hearts. Thank you for all your hard work and your tears. Thank you, because you bring the miracle of God's mercy to our brothers and sisters in our world. Always forgive, always be merciful. And bring that mercy to the brothers and sisters of our world. Dear brothers, priests, may the Lord console you, strengthen you, and reward you. Thank you. And Pope Francis concludes his homily. He invited all of the priests gathered in St. Peter's Basilica, all the priests of the Diocese of Rome, and all the priests of the world to reflect at length on the word and the, that the ancient fathers often spoke about, compunction of heart, and the importance of not letting our hearts be hardened by being, by f taking opportunities to complain, but instead to be, to pay attention to our own selves, to listen to our own hearts, to listen and be have compunction of our heart and not annoyance with the the world around us but rather to pray for the world around us to be hard with ourselves and merciful with others recalled from the imitation of Christ the saying give yourself to compunction of heart since through levity of heart or excessive joyfulness and neglect of our own shortcomings that we do not feel the sorrows of our soul and now we prepare to pray the creed Fratelli carissimi, nella memoria annuale del giorno in cui Cristo Signore comunicò agli Apostoli e a noi il suo sacerdozio, volete rinnovare le promesse a suo tempo fatte? And now we move into the renewal of the priestly promises. Beloved sons, asked the Pope, and the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his Apostles and on us. Are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishops and holy people of God the promises you once made? And they respond, I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which promoted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? I am, they say. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? I am, they re respond. As you, dearest sons and daughters, 
pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. The response is, Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. and pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and the servant of all May the Lord keep all of us in his charity and lead us all, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. to the liturgy of the blessing of the oils. There will be a procession with the oils to the altar. The processional hymn is O Redemptor. On the fertile tree, the kindly sunlight formed this offering, which bowed down, your people gathered to the ages Savior bring. King of our eternal homeland, consecrate this olive oil for our use. A living sign which Satan's evil's laws will foil. So may all, both men and women, who are by the chrism sealed, be renewed, that human nature's wounded glory may be healed. Bathing in the sacred wellspring shall the mind from sin redeem, where the forehead is anointed, chris, charis, chris, charismatic graces stream. Of the Father's love begotten, gracing once the virgin's womb, Lighten all who share this chrism, close the door which leads to doom. Let this be for us a feast day, 
while the ages pass away, sanctified by worthy praise and undimmed by time's decay. The deacon intones the oil of the sick. O God, Father of all consolation, who through your Son have willed to heal the infirmities of the sick, listen favorably to this prayer of faith. Send down from heaven, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon the rich substance of this oil, which you were pleased to bring forth from vigorous green trees to restore our bodies, so that by your holy blessing this oil may be, for anyone who is anointed with it, a safeguard for body, mind, and spirit, to take away every pain, every infirmity, and every sickness. May it become your holy oil, O Lord, blessed by you for our use, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The oil of the sick, which the Pope just blessed, was his pure olive oil and used for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And now, the oil of the catechumens, which is also pure olive oil and used for adults and infants prior to baptism. O God, strength and protection of your people who have placed in the oil you have created a sign of endurance, graciously bless this oil, grant fortitude to catechumens who are anointing with it, that receiving your divine wisdom and strength, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, may undertake generously the labors of Christian life, and make worthy of adoption to sonship may find joy in being born again and living in your church through Christ our Lord. The third oil Holy chrism oil is olive oil mixed with balsam. The oil symbolizes strength, and the fragrant balsam represents the aroma of Christ. Anointing with chrism oil signifies the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is used to consecrate someone or something to God's service. Chrism oil is also part of the baptismal rite. Ecco l'olio del Santo Crisma. After intoning the oil for the Holy Chrism, the deacon brings pours balsam into the olive oil. And Pope Francis prays over the oil and blesses it. Fr 
Let us pray, dear brethren, to God the Father Almighty, that he may bless and sanctify this fragrant oil, and may those outwardly signed with it be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. And the Pope blows into the Amphora. And we all pause for a moment to pray silently in our hearts. O oh God, author of every increase and of all spiritual growth, graciously accept the joyful homage of thanksgiving which the Church renders you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to produce fruit-bearing plants, and among them the olive tree, to bring forth the great richness of this oil, that its fruit might serve for the making of sacred chrism. David, too, foreseen by the spirit of prophecy, the sacraments of your grace, sang of oil, making our faces radiant with joy. And when in former days the world's sins were washed away in the great flood, the dove showing forth by an olive branch a figure of the gift to come announced that peace had been restored to the earth. In these later times, all this has been manifestly fulfilled for when all sinful deeds are washed away in the waters of baptism, an anointing with this oil makes our faces joyful and serene. Moreover, to your servant Moses you gave the command that he make his brother Aaron washed first with water, a priest by the pouring of this oil. To this there came still greater dignity, when your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, insisted on being washed by J John in Jordan's waters. For as your Holy Spirit in the likeness of a dove was sent upon him from on high, your voice then followed and declared him to be your only begotten Son, well pleasing to you, and you were seen clearly to affirm him, just as your prophet David had foretold, as the Lord as the one anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. To you, therefore, O Lord, we pray that by blessing you may graciously sanctify the rich substance of this oil you have created and permeate it with the strength of the Holy Spirit by means, too, of the power at work in your Christ, from whose holy name is named the chrism, with which you have anointed your priests and kings, prophets and martyrs, for those to be reborn through the spiritual bath of baptism, make the chrism you have created a holy sign of the fullness of life and salvation, that through the sanctification imparted by the anointing, and with the corruption of their first birth now cleansed, they may be made a temple of your majesty, and give forth the fragrance of an innocence of life pleasing to you. By the nature of the sacrament you have established, may they be endowed with the dignity of king, priest, and prophet, and clothed with the garment of that incorruption which is your gift. And may this oil become the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and make them partakers of eternal life, sharers of heavenly glory, through Christ our Lord. As you will have noticed, the prayers with the blessing of these two oils and the consecration of the chrism oil provided us with a catechesis of their use within the Church's liturgical life. Each year the local bishop blesses these enough new oils for every parish during the chrism mass. 
The holy oils are then transported to individual parishes, where they are available for use during the year. Though the bishop cannot be physically present at every baptism or confirmation in his diocese, he can be symbolically present through the holy oils he blesses. And now we move into the Liturgy of the Eucharist. As the deacons, the celebrant, prepare the altar, we prepare our own hearts to celebrate this Eucharist together with all of the priests of Rome and with the Holy Father. the offering, we hear the words of the Psalm 103. The earth is replete with the fruit of your work, O Lord. You bring forth bread from the earth, and wine to cheer the heart, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen the heart of man. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. The, the celebrant at this Mass is Cardinal Angelo de Donatis. He is the Archpriest of the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. He is also the Chancellor of the Lateran University.
Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Il Signore sia con voi. In alto i nostri cuori. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È cosa buona e giusta. È veramente cosa buona e giusta. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made with his, his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the Word, and strengthen them with the sacraments, as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Padre Clementissimo, noi ti supplichiamo e ti chiediamo per Gesù Cristo. We pray the first Eucharistic prayer known as the Roman Canon. You're welcome to follow along in your Missal. Queste offerte, questo sacrificio puro e santo, noi te lo offriamo anzitutto per la tua Chiesa, santa e cattolica, perché tu le dia pace, la protegga, la raduni e la governi su tutta la terra in unione con il tuo servo, il nostro Papa Francesco, e con tutti quelli che custodiscono la fede cattolica trasmessa dagli Apostoli. 
Ricordati, Signore, dei tuoi fedeli. Ricordati di tutti coloro che sono qui riuniti, dei quali conosci la fede e la devozione. Per loro ti offriamo e anche se ti offrono questo sacrificio di lode e innalzano la preghiera a te, Dio eterno, vivo e vero, per ottenere a sé e ai loro cari redenzione, sicurezza di vita e salute. In comunione con tutta la Chiesa, ricordiamo e veneriamo anzitutto la gloriosa e sempre Vergine Maria, Madre del nostro Dio e Signore Gesù Cristo, San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, i Tuoi Santi Apostoli e Martiri, Pietro e Paolo, Andrea, Giacomo, Giovanni, Tommaso, Giacomo, Filippo, Bartolomeo, Matteo, Simone e Tadeo, Lino, Cleto, Clemente, Sisto, Cornelio e Cipriano, Lorenzo, Crisogono, Giovanni e Paolo, Cosma e Damiano, e tutti i tuoi santi, per i loro meriti e le loro preghiere, donaci sempre aiuto e protezione. Accetta con benevolenza, o oh Signore, questa offerta che ti presentiamo, noi tuoi ministri e tutta la tua famiglia. Disponi nella tua pace i nostri giorni, salvaci dalla dannazione eterna e accoglici nel gregge dei tuoi eletti. Santifica, o oh Dio, questa offerta con la potenza della Tua benedizione e degnati di accettarla a nostro favore in sacrificio spirituale perfetto, perché diventi per noi il corpo e il sangue del Tuo amatissimo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo. La vigilia della Sua passione, Egli prese il pane nelle Sue mani sante e venerabili, e alzando gli occhi al cielo, a te, Dio, Padre suo Onnipotente, rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, spezzò il pane, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese nelle sue mani sante e venerabili questo glorioso calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue, per la nuova ed eterna alleanza» versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. In questo sacrificio, O Padre, noi tuoi ministri e il tuo popolo santo, Celebriamo il memoriale della Beata Passione, della Risurrezione dai morti e della gloriosa Ascensione al Cielo del Cristo tuo Figlio e nostro Signore. E offriamo alla tua Maestà Divina, tra i doni che ci hai dato, 
la vittima pura, santa e immacolata, pane santo della vita eterna, calice dell'eterna salvezza. Volgi sulla nostra offerta il tuo sguardo sereno e benigno, come hai voluto accettare i doni di Abele, il giusto, il sacrificio di Abramo, nostro padre nella fede, e l'oblazione pure e santa di Melchisedec, tuo sommo sacerdote. Ti supplichiamo, Dio Onnipotente, fa che questa offerta per le mani del tuo Angelo Santo sia portata sull'altare del cielo, davanti alla tua Maestà Divina, perché su tutti noi che partecipiamo di questo altare, comunicando al santo mistero del corpo e sangue del tuo Figlio, scenda la pienezza di ogni grazia e benedizione del cielo. Ricordati, o oh Signore, dei tuoi fedeli che ci hanno preceduto con il segno della fede e dormono il sonno della pace. Dona loro, o oh Signore, e a tutti quelli che riposano in Cristo la beatitudine, la luce e la pace. Anche a noi, i tuoi ministri peccatori, ma fiduciosi nella tua infinita misericordia, concedi, o oh Signore, di aver parte alla comunità dei tuoi santi apostoli e martiri, Giovanni, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, Ignazio, Alessandro, Marcellino, Pietro, Felicita, Perpetua, Agata, Lucia, Agnese, Cecilia, Anastasia e tutti i tuoi santi. Ammettici a godere della loro sorte beata non per i nostri meriti, ma per la ricchezza del tuo perdono. Per Cristo nostro Signore, tuo Dio crei e santifichi sempre, Fai vivere, benedici e doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo ed in Cristo, a te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, the Our Father. Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us peace in our days. And by the help of Your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Ecco l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo. Beati gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. Oh o Signore, non sono degno di partecipare alla tua mensa, ma di soltanto una parola e io sarò salvato. As communion is distributed to those present in St. Peter's Basilica, who number around 4,000, we pause and join them in spiritual communion as we enter the Holy Triduum, the holiest days of the Church's liturgical calendar.
communion hymn sung in Latin. Your love is for justice, your hatred for evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above other kings. My heart overflows with noble words. To the king I must speak the song I have made, my tongue as nimble as the pen of a scribe. You are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips, because God has blessed you forevermore. Almighty One, gird your sword upon your thigh in splendor and state. Ride on in triumph for the cause of truth and goodness and right. Take aim with your bow in your dread right hand. Your arrows are sharp. The peoples fall beneath you. The foes of the king fall down and lose heart. Your throne, O God, shall endure forever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of your kingdom. It's from Psalm 44. hymn, the second communion hymn, is in, sung in Italian. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, even for his own namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff my comfort. My table you have furnished in the presence of my foes, my head you have anointed with oil, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. We can pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and, ignite, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
as this chrism mass draws to a close the blessed oils are will be distributed to the clergy who will carry them forth to their respective parishes and communities these sacred oils will be used in the administration of the sacraments bringing comfort healing and grace to all who receive them as we conclude this solemn ceremony let us carry forth the spirit of renewal and dedication inspired by the chrism mass may the grace of our Go god's love infuse our lives with purpose and meaning Andiamo. Concedi Dio onnipotente che rinnovati dai santi misteri we beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now we prepare to receive the Holy Father's apostolic blessing. Signore sia con voi. Sia benedetto il nome del Signore. Nostro aiuto è nel nome del Signore. Egli ha fatto cielo e terra. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre, Figlio e lo Spirito Santo. Amen. Fratelli carissimi, abbiamo benedetto. Dear brothers, we have blessed the chrism, the oil of catechumens and of the sick. They are now entrusted to you, bishops and priests, so that divine grace, the bearer of strength and life, may flow in souls through your ministry. Take care to respect, honor, and protect these oils, signs of God's grace. May those persons, places, and things marked by them be resplendent with the holiness of God. And the Pope prepares to put incense into the thurible and he blesses it so that he may incense the holy oils. And with the Ave Regina Celorum, 
We end this live broadcast of the celebration of the Chrism Mass, presided over by Pope Francis here in St. Peter's Basilica. Please visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts for a summary of today's liturgy, as well as other coverage of Vatican and Word World News. We especially invite you to join us for the other broadcasts of the Holy Triduum liturgies. We thank all of our technical staff. And on behalf of Vatican Media, my name is Devin Watkins. It has been a pleasure to have you with us. I wish you all a blessed Holy Thursday. And we'll be back again this evening with, for the live broadcast of the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.